Hey folks, remember earlier this month I did a transcription process video and I tabbed out the Billy Strings intro to Tennessee Stud? Well, after I did that video, I got a lot of transcription requests. A lot. And some of you folks that ordered transcription said that you were interested in sponsoring YouTube videos like that one. So for today, a big thank you goes out to my main man, Rick, for sponsoring this video. Now, if you want to order a transcription or if you want to sponsor a video, it's easy. All you got to do is go to the tab store at lessonswithmarcel.com. You scroll down down and fill out the tab request form and then I'll get back to you with an estimate. And if you're okay with me sharing the transcription with the rest of the world, then I might make a video out of it. Anyway, Rick ordered a transcription of John Wilkes Booth off of the 1988 Tony Rice album, Native American. This is a killer record. It's actually Jerry Douglas's favorite record that he ever did with Tony Rice, if that tells you anything. And in my opinion, it's sort of the height of the work that he did with uh, engineer Billy Wolf. Welcome back. You're watching New Country and I'm Tony Rice. Today's focus is on the second to last track, John Wilkes Booth. I'd like to do a tune uh, for my new album. The album is called Native American on Rounder Records. It is well documented that Tony Rice has a keen interest in the Lincoln assassination. Other tunes, such as the instrumental Port Tobacco, take inspiration from the event. So it makes sense that when meeting Mary Chapin Carpenter for the first time, Tony suggested she write a song about John Wilkes Booth. I wrote the song and demoed it up with my buddy John Jennings. I handed it over to Tony and never expected to hear another word, and then he told me he really liked it. Needless to say, the fact that it ended up on the next Tony record was the greatest compliment to me. And with that, let's tackle the guitar break. So like always, we're going to start with some techniques, scale shapes, basically whatever we need, and then we'll do that measure by measure breakdown. If you want to get the free tab, just check the link in the description down below. It's already up at LessonsWithMarcel.com, and the PDF that you get actually includes the intro and outro breaks as well. Sweet, let's get into it. If you watch a lot of my How to Play series, then you probably know what's coming next. We're going to look at a couple of pentatonic shapes just to get comfortable. In this case, we're looking at three major pentatonic shapes in the key of C with our capo on first fret. In those first and third pentatonic boxes that I just showed you, Tony actually does a fair amount of work with the major scale as well, so let's make sure we're going to be prepared for that. Likewise, there's a classic piece of Tony Rice vocabulary that gets thrown into this break a couple times. It's a pull-off that plays with the minor third in that second pentatonic box that I showed you. One last thing to point out is that the form of this song has a lot of bluegrass measures in it. That is to say, it has a lot of extra 2-4 measures in there. Now, rather than write those as 2-4 measures, I've actually written them as 6-4 measures, which means I've combined the 2-4 with the 4-4 from a neighboring measure. 2 plus 4 equals 6. It all works out. It's just a personal notation choice because I think it looks cleaner with the chord changes. If you don't read a lot of notation or rhythms, don't get caught up in those details. I just want you to know if some of those measures look a little bit long, it's on purpose. Cool, now that we've gone over all of that, take another listen to the break and see if you can spot those scale shapes, that lick, and maybe some of that crookedness in the form. We should be ready for that measure by measure breakdown now. So looking at this first measure, there's a couple things that should stand out to you immediately. Number one, what I see is that this is one of our 6-4 measures. This is one of our crooked measures. Um, so I took 4-4 four, four, and I combined it with 2-4 and 4 plus 2 equals 6. 
This whole thing works out. And the other thing that I notice is that the first quarter note is in parentheses, which either means it's a ghosted note or it's being held over from the previous measure. In this case, it is ghosted. My ghosted, I mean that it's kind of hard to hear what he's doing in the recording. And I think he's just lightly either playing a bass note or strumming part of a chord. It's at the beginning of a measure, so a bass note is a really good guess. It sounds like this. So there's a lot of things that are happening that we can analyze that feel like Tony. Number one, this is how Tony moves from C chords to F chords. A famous example is in Tristry Blues, he does something like this, which is a very similar phrase to what's on here. Right? The other thing that we can see is we have one of our double stops, we have the G string and the B string, they're played together, and they ring through the rest of the measure after they're played. Moving on, we have a measure of 4-4. Four, four. Hey, order has been restored to the world. Uh, it sounds like this. Ah, there's our lick. There's our piece of language, right? <laughs> and right before that, of course, we quickly slide into fifth fret and then play third fret on the E string. And both of those are on the beat. They're both down strokes. Down, down. Here's our language. After that, um, this passage. Oh, that feels so much like the major scale I showed you earlier. Uh, now all of this, you can see consistent eighth notes with one triplet um, is all going to be down, up, down, up, down, up. The triplet is a hammer-on pull-off triplet, so it's only going to take a downstroke to play that. Uh, but after that, I have down, up, down, up. Moving on to the next line. Two measures right here are full of Tony Rice style syncopation. There's this really specific kind of syncopation he does. And uh, it feels like an eighth note, a quarter note, and then an eighth note. Um, and it takes up two beats. Now, when I write it on the page, normally what I do is I write an eighth note, then two eighth notes tied together, and then an eighth note after that. And then you can really see the deleted subdivision, right? You can see the missing guy is the one at the end of the tie. Um, so if I play this and I make the missing note very apparent, maybe that'll help you feel it. So. That's with the syncopation, that's the missing note. And since that missing note is always a downbeat, the upstroke always comes in after that. So down, up, up, right? Moving on, this next 6-4 measure is a little hard to get into because you can see I have a pickup that's on the and of the previous measure, um, but we'll get there, right? So four and one and two. This measure is really easy to get in your head, right? Don't make it more complicated than it is. Tony is basically just strumming, his hands moving up and down. And if I play the second half of that 6-4 measure, you can see that. It's real casual, right? He's just hidden some strings. It's okay if some other notes sneak in there. Don't think about it too much. <laughs> the next passage after that. Ah, Tony Rice syncopation again, right? One and two and three and four. So be aware of that syncopation. Make sure you're putting those the breasts for the missing beats in there because they, they do exist. The time is still there. We're just not playing a note there. Um, that last passage sounds like this. Right? Now, you can see that the slide happens from 3rd fret to 5th fret, and I've put a really tiny note in there for, for that 3rd fret note. But it happens almost instantaneously, right? It should feel like and 1, and 2, and 3, and... Happens on the end of three. Cool, continuing, you can see we have another 6-4 measure, and there's our language. It's the exact same lick. Uh, the only difference is Tony's using it to uh, get to an open G string. He's using sort of an escape note idea. Open G string. Now, one way that you might mess this up or have something weird happen is as you go into the next line out of this lick, this third fret on the A string should be played with an upstroke. It's happening on the and after beat one. It should be an upstroke. If you play with a downstroke, the strums that come afterwards, those notes in parentheses, as in some ghosted strums, they're going to be awkward because, of course, they should be down up. And if the note before it is a downstroke, that's not going to make any sense. This measure has to feel like down, up, down, up. Continuing as we walk down, uh, we got this. Both of those are going to be downstrokes. They're quarter notes, of course, on beat one and two. The second one is in parentheses because it's hit very softly. I'm not sure if Tony intended for it to be hit again, but it sounds like it is. Finishing that measure. Then we have a nice little run here. Mm -hmm. 
this uh, this passage right here too suffers from the same thing. Of course, it ends with third fret on an and on that A string, and you have to hit that with an upstroke so you can come back down to hit that strum. Otherwise, you're doing two downs in a row, and it might feel awkward. So those last two measures, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down. <laughs> All right, so two ups in a row because of that pull off at the end. And uh, as long as you're aware of that, you won't have any problems. If you're still with me, thanks for sticking it out. Now I'm going to play you the whole break, and I'm going to put the tabs up on the screen so you can play along. And remember, if this is a little bit quick for you, that YouTube does have some playback settings right there in the corner, and you can hit that wheel, and you can change it to 50% speed or 75% speed, whatever's comfortable for you. All right, I hope you like taking a lesson from the biggest, baddest billy goat in the barnyard. As always, you can like this video, you can leave a comment, or you can subscribe to this channel. All of those things really let me know that you want more of these videos. And of course, you can check out my website, lessonswithmarcel.com. There we have a bunch of great blog posts, and we have all of the tabs in the tab store. Some of them are paid, some of them are free. Of course, you can sign up for Skype lessons, and there's all the licks from the Jazz and Grass Instagram account where we post a new lick every single day. And lastly, since it's been so popular lately, you can order your own transcriptions by going to the tab store and scrolling to the bottom. Let me know what you want and I can shoot you back an estimate. And I guess that's it. So I'll see you all next week. From the mountains cold, we ring them bells at the cross road. Through the valley below, my love was running from town. That midnight train.